Chromatin sharing is the step and shift where I receive the most amount of questions. So let's spend a couple of minutes reviewing this key step. There are two basic methods to shear your samples during chip experiments, enzymatic digestion and sonication. Enzymatic digestion, or what's used for native chip, which is chip with no cross-linking. This approach uses restriction enzymes to cleave DNA into smaller fragments. Since it doesn't use formaldehyde cross-linking, it can allow greater antibody accessibility to very strong DNA binding factors such as histones. But it could also produce sequence bias. Some researchers worry that enzymatic digestion will not produce random segmentation, and certain loci will then be overrepresented providing a false sense of your biological story. Sonication uses high frequency sound waves to shear samples. We recommend using sonication since it is less prone to bias than enzymatic digestion. There are two main types of sonicators. Probe sonicators, which transfer ultrasonic energy directly into samples, and water bath sonicators, which transfer ultrasonic energy through water and closed tubes into your sample. We see easier results with water bath sonicators because they tend to be more consistent user to user, easier to use, and gentler on the lysate. Sonication and the resulting fragmented DNA can be influenced by a number of factors. Of course, the amount of power you deliver and the number of cycles you sonicate can dramatically impact your size distribution, but there are some other less obvious factors. Some less obvious variables that can impact your sonication are your cross-linking conditions. If you increase cross-linking for longer durations or even use a different concentration of formaldehyde, you may need to sonicate for longer to compensate. Tube type. If you change the type of tube that your sample is in, say from a 15 ml conical to a 1.5 ml tube, you'll probably need to adjust your sonication conditions as well. Volume of liquid in your tube. If you change the volume of liquid in your tube, you should confirm that your sonication results are the same. Volume can introduce variations in fragment size. Buffer composition. This one is a biggie. The type and concentration of detergents in your lysis buffer will definitely change your fragment size. So if you make any adjustments to your buffer, be sure to re-optimize your sonication parameters. Here are some tips that should be useful when you're optimizing your sharing. Keep your samples cold. Keep your samples on ice or in cold water, alternating cycles of on and off ice to allow your samples to cool between cycles. This will help maintain your DNA protein interactions. Sonication produces heat that can disrupt your protein DNA interactions. For chip qPCR, shoot for a fragment size between 200 to 500 base pairs. For ChIP-seq applications using a solid platform, shoot for a fragment size range from 100 to 300 base pairs. If you're using another platform, follow that vendor's recommendations. Be sure to verify your fragment size before moving into your immunoprecipitation step of the CHIP protocol. You want to aim for the least amount of sonication cycles and intensity that gives you the correct size distribution. So I hope this quick review and these tips will help you optimize your sharing process. As we've covered here, there are a lot of factors that can influence your fragment size, but I think you'll find it's well worth the effort as you head into your downstream application.